All right, good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you all for your patience. First and foremost, uh, I want to just say, or off the bat, that no one has, no officer has died, and uh, folks are trying to start those rumors, so I want to say that right off the bat. Uh, before I make some uh, specific comments on what occurred tonight, Mayor Turner and the council members here, Mayor Turner, uh, will open up the briefing. Mayor? Let me just start off by saying that this has been a, a tough day for our city. Um, but I certainly want to encourage all Houstonians to pray for all of our police officers who are at Memorial Hermann. This is the one of the finest hospitals you will find anywhere in the country. And they are being attended to with the best medical care. So pray, pray for all of, all of our uh, police officers. Um, I will tell you one of them is either uh, will be discharged if it has not already been. That is, that's good news. And for the others who will be remaining here at the hospital, uh, pray for them, and pray for their pray for their families, uh, pray for their pray pray for their spouses, uh, their children, uh, their parents, um, all of their loved ones. And there are many loved ones uh, that are on the road, you know, in route uh, here. Uh, so pray for those who will be flying from outside of the state, and pray for those who are on the road driving in. That's that's important. Um, let me also thank um, uh, EMS and the fire department uh, for the work that they did in getting all of them here to this hospital in very quick time. Let me tell you, um, let me commend EMS, uh, Chief Pena, the fire department, all of them who responded uh, to our police officers in that moment of need uh, and got them here in, in, in very fast time so that they could be attended to. I want to thank the, the Houston Police Department and others for clearing the roadway, for clearing the freeway, so that they could bring them, uh, get them here, so they could get the care that they desperately needed uh, in a very quick fashion. Um, and then I just want to thank all of, of Houston uh, for just offering their prayers. Let me just, let me just say this. Um, our job is to keep people safe in our city. And I want to be very clear is that, um, you know, we do not tolerate um, uh, any sort of activity, whether it's drug activity, drug trafficking, uh, whether it's whatever it may be, uh, we don't tolerate it in our city. That we want to work night and day uh, to make sure that our city remains safe. We don't want anyone injured in any sort of, in any manner, whether it's a person that's on the, on the street or whether it's a police officer, whether it's a firefighter, or first responder, whoever it might be. And so uh, I'm just very grateful and thankful for everyone who's, who's come together in this moment. I want to thank the members of City Council who are here standing as well uh, tonight, who have left their, their offices or their homes uh, to be here. I want, to, I want to say a special thanks to each one of the City Council members. I want to say a special thanks for Tiffin Fatita, uh, uh, who, is, who is here. Uh, to stand and to be at this hospital, continuing to pray for all the police officers. And I want to thank all of you for the coverage that you have provided. But let's con and the medical staff. I really want to thank the medical staff here at Herman Memorial. They are just incredible, and they are giving some fantastic care uh, to, these, to these police officers. So, Chief, let me turn it back over to you. Thank, thank you, Mayor, and thank you for always, you know, one of the, the calls you never want to get for, as a chief is, you've had officers shot. One of the calls you never want to make to a mayor, to a family member is that uh, officers have been hurt. So I'm going to go over the incident real quick. And you know, we've had a second officer involved shooting uh, in uh, Northside. And I don't know if you guys want to hear about that or not, but I'm going to focus initially on this first shooting. So at about 4.15 PM, uh, a narcotics uh, group 15 from the Houston Police Department, uh, who was uh, working an investigation involving the sales of narcotics uh, out of a residence in the 7800 block of Hardy Street, responded to Hardy Street as a team of about a dozen uh, narcotics officers and uh, about a half a dozen patrol officers from the East Side Division. Uh, the patrol officers uh, were there to provide support and obviously to provide the uniform presence uh, for this operation. Uh, shortly before 5 o'clock, the officers, the narcotics officers, attempted to serve a, a search warrant on the location at 7800 uh, Hardy Street. They announced themselves as Houston police officers while simultaneously breaching the front door of the residence uh, and while the police uh, car, the marked police unit with uniformed members as well as the police officers or the police uh, garb also hit the siren 
uh, to make sure everybody can uh, and hit the lights so they knew the police officers were there. Immediately upon breaching the door, uh, the officers came under fire from uh, one or two suspects inside the house. We're not sure how many of the suspects fired at this time. It's, as you can imagine, it was a pretty chaotic scene over there, and uh, the investigation's unfolding. As a result of the exchange of gunfire uh, between our officers and uh, one or two suspects, uh, we have five officers injured, four were struck by gunfire, uh, two officers have uh, uh, are, are currently in surgery. Uh, they're in surgery for uh, gunfire uh, sustained, and, and they are in critical but stable condition. And we're hopeful that uh, with the prayers of this community that they will recover. But again, they are in critical condition but stable. Their families have been are here. Uh, some of the families are in transit, <laughs> but two officers are currently in surgery. Uh, two other officers were shot, and they will remain. Uh, hospitalized for observation for at least 24-hour period. Uh, they were struck by gunfire, but they're, uh, they are basically ambulatory and they're expected to make a full recovery. Uh, one officer sustained an injury uh, during the gun battle. It's important to note that once the officers, the initial, the in initial indications are once the officers breached the door and the, gun sh the gunfire began from the suspects, uh, one of the suspects actually retreated momentarily to the back of the room and then that suspect came back and again engaged the officers in, in gunfire. <clears throat> I have not been able to determine how many of our officers are shot, uh, have returned fire. That's part of the ongoing investigation. As you can imagine, we needed to work the scene from a tactical perspective. SWAT responded along with other allied agencies. We uh, established a pretty hard perimeter and once you had five officers injured, four shot, and five believed to be shot at the time, uh, we had to slow down and actually turn it into a very methodical tactical operation. Uh, the SWAT operators, upon taking control of the scene, uh, in, uh, uh, utilized two different robots to go into the residence and to actually uh, help search the residence. Two suspects were struck by return gunfire by members of the Houston Police Department. Uh, those suspects, once uh, we were able to render the scene safe by SWAT, were pronounced deceased at the scene from the return gunfire from the officers. I want to personally thank the Houston Fire Department, uh, their phenomenal partners, uh, the care and the concern and the love that they showed and displayed for our officers and their families with second and none. Steve Pena one, runs a, a world-class organization, and I also personally want to thank, on behalf of all the men and women of the Houston Police Department, the, the staff that you see behind it. We are so blessed to live in a city with uh, medical facilities that people from around the world, people from around the world that of well means come here because they know that this ho these hospitals, this institution of hospitals are really second to none. I really believe as a result of their excellence, uh, our officers can be in better hands. Um, I also want to thank Life Flight, and I'll call Chief Pena here in a minute to update you on who was transport, uh, how many were transported by Life Flight and by ground. But it, and I also want to thank our members of the Houston Police Department. It's important to note that this, this investigation began, and I was talking to the, the council members and uh, Stardig and Gallegos and Dwight Boykins and the mayor that they received com emails, we receive emails, we complain, receive complaints. Our eyes and ears are truly the community that we serve. We could not do what we do without the community we serve. This all began because a neighbor had the courage to say, we're not going to put up. We think that there's, they're dealing dope out of this house. And we don't just ignore that. We immediately passed that on to our narcotics division that began this investigation, was able to actually determine that narcotics dealing, street level narcotics dealing, uh, black uh, tar heroin was being dealt out of this. And we know the poison that's killing so many kids, uh, not only here in Houston, but around the country. Uh, they immediately started an investigation and that's what they were there tonight. They were there to execute a search warrant and unfortunately, as we know, ironically, the mayor and I had our press conference today and uh, Tillman Fertitta, the chairman of the, uh, uh, of the police foundation, Houston Police Foundation, we were celebrating two things today. One, at the Houston Police Academy, we're celebrating the groundbreaking. He's right behind me there, he's being shy. The groundbreaking of a tactical village that again is the result of a $10 million investment by the people of this community and their police department that tells you the kind of support we have. And two, we were there to celebrate the fact that despite the fact that this police department in 2019 has 300 fewer officers than we had 20 years ago, about 500,000 more people, our men and women, we said it then and we'll say it again, 
they don't make excuses, they make a difference. And what you saw today with these officers showing that they have the courage, the guts, and the perseverance to do what they need to do to keep this community safe. And so with that, I'll come back and answer questions, the mayor, more questions on the actual incident and do some Spanish. But I like Chief Pena, who's, uh, who's, not, only a, who's not only a colleague, he's a dear friend, to come up and talk a little bit about the outstanding work of his men and women. Good evening. This is a tough, tough day for the Houston Fire Department in the city of Houston. I think um, you know, we need to ensure that we keep these officers that were injured here tonight in our prayers and their families. Um, there's some real evil in this world, and I think the, today was evident, this incident was evident as far as the uh, dangers that our first responders face each and every day out here in the streets. Um, couldn't be prouder of the work that the Houston Fire Department uh, did. We were uh, on scene in support of the, of the uh, Houston police officers' uh, operation. Um, it was the incredible work and quick work of our medic units that uh, gave these officers, these injured officers, the best chance uh, of survival in bringing them here to this world-class uh, facility. I do uh, want to make uh, special mention uh, Medic 18, Medic 19, and Ambulance 19 and their crews here tonight on Sea shift uh, who did an outstanding job of, of ensuring that uh, they, the injured officers were provided with, uh, with the critical care that they needed. Uh, as well as the other units on scene that were there to, uh, to evacuate the, the patients onto life flight. So we had three injured officers that were transported by ambulance here to uh, Herman Memorial and two that were life flighted from the scene. Um, all of them receiving advanced life support and advanced life care throughout uh, transport. Um, we got them uh, to the hospital um, in, in critical but uh, uh, <coughs> stable condition. And um, again, we're praying for, for uh, these officers to pull through. And can't say enough about the work that the Houston police officers uh, and the Houston Police Department do each and every day, <clears throat> as well as the Houston uh, Fire Department and the incredible support uh, that we provide for each other. So um, with that, we'll, uh, we'll be available for any questions. Chief, before you go on, <coughs> wait, hold on, let me just acknowledge the fact that uh, Governor uh, Abbott uh, did call, uh, had a chance to talk to him and expressed uh, his concern for, for all of these officers and their families um, and wanted me to let you know that he's uh, certainly sending forth his prayers uh, on behalf of these officers as well as their families. So I did want to make that yeah. note. Chief, the two officers in critical, where are they wounded? Say again? The two officers. They both were struck in the neck area by gunfire. Did they make it inside the house? Or well, you know what? That, I, uh, that's part of the investigation. We know that uh, that they breached and they, became, they came under fire right away. Let me just say that to the media real quick, I just got reports a minute ago that somebody's already found the house of one of these officers and showed up. That is irresponsible. These are narcotics officers that work undercover. They do not need the media out in front of their house. So it's not helpful and I don't think it's appropriate. So if you're that station, whoever you were, please don't just get out of that area. These guys all work uh, undercover. Let me just give you a quick uh, re uh, overview of who got shot in terms of ages. And uh, one of the individuals struck was uh, of age 50. He's a sergeant. He was trans transported by ambulance. Another one of our uh, male sergeants by the name of, I'm not going to give it up because I don't think we've, I don't know, we've made all the, no uh, all the uh, notifications. Age 50. Uh, was life lighted, another senior police officer, age 54, and I can tell you this is the case agent. And let me tell you why I think these cops are heroes. This officer's been shot several times in line of duty. And while most people would call it a day after being shot and surviving, this man is 54 years old. He's the case agent on this case, and he was there in the front line. So if that doesn't tell you about the heart of the men and women we have the privilege to lead, I don't know what will. He's uh, He's 54, and he's been on since 1984. The first one since 1993, the second one since 1991. The other officer that was uh, life lighted in the 54-year-old and the 40-year-old, uh, those two are in surgery. He was actually life lighted as well. And the last one is 33, and he's transported by ambulance. Uh, the officers that returned fire at the scene are being debriefed by the Special Investigations Unit by Internal Affairs, the Harris County District Attorney's Office is on scene at the officer involved shooting uh, and they will be working with us, the Civil Rights Division, to ensure that 
uh, all policies, procedures, and law were followed. With that, uh, I'm going to let uh, Joe Gamaldi, who's a, uh, in times like this, uh, sometimes what we can't do, the, the Houston Police Officers Union do a phenomenal job of being partners with us, and uh, I'd like to have him say a couple of comments on behalf of uh, the Police Officers Union. Yeah, first of all, let me just thank the community. The outpouring of support has once been, been amazing, and it shows why Houston's the greatest city in the world. I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who already contacted us to make sure these officers are doing all right. And I want to thank all of our partners at HFD, all the officers out on that scene, who all played a crucial role in getting them down here. And certainly thank you to the medical staff, the world-class medical staff here that are taking care of our officers. But now I want to speak on behalf of the 5,200 brave men and women of the Houston Police Department and the other 800,000 police officers that are working these streets every single day, putting their lives on the line. We are sick and tired of having targets on our back. We are sick and tired of having dirt bags trying to take our lives when all we're trying to do is protect this community and protect our families. Enough is enough. And if you're the ones that are out there spreading the rhetoric that police officers are the enemy, well, just know we've all got your number now. We're going to be keeping track of all of y'all, and we're going to make sure that we hold you accountable every time you stir the pot on our police officers. We've had enough, folks. We're out there doing our jobs every day, putting our lives on the line for our families. Enough is enough. Now, please, keep these officers in your prayers. Thanks, Joe. Mayor, you have anything? We'll, we'll open it up to questions, or I can do Spanish real quick. Two suspects Questions. total or three suspects? There are two suspects that were shot uh, and returned gunfire, and were they pronounced at the scene? What kind of weapons? Two suspects. Semi-automatic is all I have. I don't have anything other than semi-automatic. Tell us about those suspects. They're back I, I can't tell you anything other than I know that because we had a search warrant that uh, narcotics activity was going on in that residence, uh, specifically the sale of black tar heroin. Is there gang activity? Well. We don't. That's part of the investigation. Some automatic pistols. One officer, out of the five officers, four were shot. Two critically that are in surgery. Both shot in the neck. Uh, uh, but they're stable, thank God. I talked. The mayor and I talked to the surgeon on the way out. And one was uh, an injury that's not from gunfire. What kind of injury? It's a knee injury. Could you, when you're getting shot, people are moving. People are moving in all kinds of directions. Uh, and when there's a lot of shots being fired at you, and you know, uh, you, you get four officers shot, five officers shot. That's a lot of gunfire that came our way. Do you know if any of the officers were injured by friendly fire? No, I mean, the, uh, I have, I, let me just say this right off the bat. We don't suspect anybody being uh, struck by uh, uh, friendly fire. I don't, I don't expect because our people are really well trained. Even though in these very dynamic situations, that certainly can happen. But if an officer was shot by friendly fire, there's only the only people responsible under the law and, and morally are the people inside that residence that decided to take shots at police officers executing a lawful search warrant. What else? What is the situation in this moment, in this community that is altamente hispana? What message do you have for the people there and about the state of health of the people? Well, the community eh, hispana, we want to know that we have a great pride that the community saw that there was pensaban que estaban vendiendo drogas en esta casa en la calle que le dije hace un ratico. Uh, la comunidad tuvo el coraje para decirnos, por favor, no queremos esta actividad en nuestra comunidad. Mis, nuestros oficiales que son héroes, inmediatamente la división de na, na, narcotraficante de narcotics empezaron una investigación, determinaron que estaban vendiendo heroína, eh, lo dije bien, en esa locación. Tenían orden de la corte para entrar y buscar las drogas y Casi a las 5 de la tarde de esta tarde, como una docena de oficiales de investigaciones narcotraficantes de narcóticos fueron a entrar a la casa. Cuando abrieron la puerta, inmediatamente uno o dos sospechosos empezaron a disparar a los oficiales. Los oficiales eh, también dispararon para atrás. Uh, uno de los sospechosos se huyó para atrás a otra habitación, después salió de nuevo disparando más a los oficiales. Tenemos cinco oficiales que fueron. Eh, desgraciadamente herido por el, la, las armas de fuego de los sospechosos. Dos de los oficiales fueron heridos en, en el cuello y están en la seguridad ahora mismo que estoy hablando. Gracias a Dios, aunque están en condiciones críticas, eh, están eh, en condiciones críticas, pero también no pensamos que van a morir. Les suplicamos a la comunidad, les damos las gracias por estar por sus oraciones, por favor, sigan orando por nuestros oficiales y quiero darle las gracias al alcalde, a sus colegas, a todos mis colegas, especialmente al jefe uh, Sam Peña, los bomberos, también el Life Flight que llegaron. Eh, tres de los oficiales fueron traídos al hospital por helicóptero, 
de Life Flight, aquí de, de, de la Herman Memorial. Y gracias a Dios vivimos en una ciudad que tenemos un departamento policíaco, no tenemos muchos policías, somos pocos, pero tenemos gran corazón y no tenemos miedo a combatir el crimen. Y quiero que sepa que uno de los oficiales que, fue, que está en la seguridad ahora, esta es la cuarta vez que, que, que ha estado herido por a, armas de fuego en su cabrera. Es un hombre de 54 años y muchos después de una vez no quieren trabajar, pues él sigue viniendo al trabajo y haciendo el esfuerzo. Los oficiales que fueron heridos, uno es de 54 años, como le dije, que era el agente. Otro fue de 50 años, uh, otro de 50 años, uno de 40 años y uno de 33 años. Los sospechosos son, eh, pienso que son hispanos, eh, no tengo su identificación por ahora, pero hay un, dos sospechosos que aparecieron en la escena. ¿La situación? ¿Cuál es la situación en el 7800 de Harding? No, no, mil qué? 7800 de Harding, ¿está controlado? No, es, es, es en la, la, la sí, 7800, sí, está todo controlado. The scene at 7800 Harding is under, is, is stable, it's under control. All we have now is an investigation going with our partners, okay? I don't have anything on the suspects, other, no, nope, I don't have anything. It's part of the investigation. So, hay dos que están en seguridad. Hay dos que están en seguridad que fueron heridos, que fueron heridos en el cuello. Eh, uno de 54 años que le dije que esa es la cuarta vez que ha tenido heridas eh, de armas de fuego. Otro de 40 años que está en la seguridad. Uh, y después hay cuatro que fueron eh, herido por alma de fuego y uno que fue herido eh, que no fue por alma de fuego. Anything else? No, no, there's no lethal. Our, our robots don't have lethal capabilities. Okay. And we use okay. two different robots so and uh, they're used to go in and, and, and help clear the house before officers uh, make entry. Anything else? Chief, obviously narcotics group 15, they serve warrants. What else do they do? Huh? I can't hear you. The narcotics group 15, is that what you call them? Obviously they serve warrants. Uh, Team 15, yeah, what, they, they, their primary mission in the narcotics division is to try to take drug dealers off of our streets and put them behind bars. Drug dealers are quite frankly, when you look across this country now at the opiate epidemic, are stealing the lives, the futures, and the hearts of so many families. And while they say that the war on drug is a, a, a losing battle, I, I would say tell that to the parents that lose their children to some, to some opiate. A personal friend of mine who had it, who I got the call when I was police chief in, in Austin, that his son, who he struggled to get out of uh, the Red Raiders, whatever university that is, up north, Texas Tech, so proud of his son, and within six months, I get the call that he's dead because of an opiate overdose. So uh, I think what narcotics does, without a doubt, is save lives, and most importantly, we know, we talked about it today, the mayor and I, that a good, out of all the murders in Houston, we know that the vast majority involve gangs, drugs, and domestic violence. So while people think that the drugs is not a, it's a harmless crime, well, the industry is not harmless, and a lot of the shootings we see in our city are drug rips or people fighting over gang territory. And so those are the three drivers, and so that's why we keep fighting. Okay, thanks everybody, and we'll have an update tomorrow probably about 10 a.m. Thank you, everybody, for your patience. Say again? The two being hospitalized overnight, where are they shot? Uh, uh, you know what? I don't remember, but they're, they're ambulatory. I think one was in the shoulder. So thanks, everybody. Appreciate you all. I gotta focus on these families tomorrow. I know you gotta ask them. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Yeah, no, fair enough. Wait a minute. That's your mic stand. Yeah. 